Several alumni have told us that they have heard of the Southern trips, but they didn't know anything about them. We have gathered you, the experts, here today to record this meeting. <laughs> I'd like to introduce the members of the team. You can either stand if that's easy for you or you can raise your hand. Okay, Bob Lowell, would you stand or wave your hand? <laughs> Bucky Isham. <clears throat> Don Colby. <clears throat> Expect to see them run out onto the field at this point. Bob Kent. <clears throat> Ike Brown. <laughs> Carl Anderson as a manager. Well, you didn't go on the southern trip, but you were a manager. Arnie Bandy. Woo! Curly Ray, right over there. Woo! <laughs> Ron Clifford. Jay Chandler. Burns Page. <clears throat> Bill Grow. Leo Latris. Woo! And Coach Rolly Lafayette. <laughs> and we have Teddy Bruce on the telephone. Teddy? Hello there. Teddy Bruce. Did I forget somebody? I forgot you. Were you on one of the teams? Yeah. yeah. Ernie Hazard. Ernie Hazard, 61. 1958. That makes, I think that's about 14 team members, a manager, and a coach here today. So that's really exciting. We're going to be starting off with a video that Tony Campbell made as he was interviewing Coach Mel Schmid. Mel took the boys south in 1955 and 56. So listen carefully to Mel as he talks about baseball and taking his team south. school there were only 90 students at that time and that's when Miss Bowl hit me with the other uh, <laughs> hammer she asked me if I uh, could or would coach a baseball team and I responded that I would love to that was one of my my favorite sports and uh, felt strong and uh, then I found out that out of 90 students 70 of them were girls uh, which made it rather difficult to uh, field a, a baseball team. But things improved uh, dramatically after that, uh, going into 53 and 54, the student body enrollment uh, uh, began to grow. Uh, it was a great bunch of kids that came to Linden. Uh, I think I have to say it was not a very sophisticated group of kids, uh, because you must remember where they came from. They came from metropolitan areas like Lunenburg and Glover and Concord 
and uh, Newark and Sheffield <laughs> and Danville and uh, uh, places that uh, uh, just uh, most of the Jewish students had never been out of Caledonia County. But they were good kids, they were good students. Uh, I had made arrangements to uh, spend the first night in Hartford, Connecticut at the YMCA. They had sleeping uh, accommodations at that point. And we left Linden uh, in four cars uh, with about five in each car. So we had a traveling team of approximately 20. And we got down to Hartford uh, and went to the YMCA and I got all the kids registered. And then I began to think, oh gosh, did I make a mistake? I said, here we are in Hartford, which is a, by comparison, a big city with lots of lights and bar rooms all over the place. And I, I, I really wondered whether I made a mistake by, by being there. Well, anyhow, we got into the YMCA. While I worried about that, the kids saw for the first time in their life an escalator and that went on up into the second and third floor to the sleeping quarters. And by gosh, if they didn't spend the whole evening just riding up and down the escalator, that was their evening entertainment. We got down to Cape May, and I think the interesting thing about that uh, game, and again, the level of sophistication of our kids, in the fourth inning, and I remember it so easily, in the fourth inning of that uh, game, we were in the field, and uh, all of a sudden, the game came to a halt. And the reason? The kids spotted a Navy blimp coming over, and they'd never seen a blimp before. And the whole game stopped as the kids watched that Navy blimp from one horizon all the way over to the other horizon. <laughs> and the umpire is yelling, play ball, play ball. And the kids are just watching that Navy blimp going across. And I will never, I will never forget that. We had uh, Tootie Bruce, a member of the uh, baseball team, whose father was President Eisenhower's uh, personal valet. And so we were able to tour the White House and everything, and uh, made for uh, a very successful uh, trip for these bunch of uh, kids. Coach Rowley, could we get you to come up here? We were in, um, I think, the Hartford, Connecticut area, and we were going for breakfast in the diner. And um, there were, I think, 20 of us. And um, we were, or I was approached by the uh, waitress and pointed out that we don't serve Bruce and, and uh, Ray Brooks. You know, she didn't say that. She said something else. So I told her that we were a baseball team from Vermont. We hope we were. And that we were here for breakfast. And we're going to eat as a team or we're going to leave as a team. She went back over to the window in the kitchen, talked for a minute or so, came back over and said, okay, those two can sit back there. Then I said, well, I'll repeat what I said before. We came in here as a team. We're going to eat breakfast as a team or we're leaving as a team. She went back over to the window at the kitchen, came back shortly and said, sit down. So we won number one with that. Right there. I wasn't familiar with Washington and the circumstances of the individuals and where they might be located. We went up to the Capitol and we were told up there it's at the White House down on Pennsylvania Avenue. Oh good. So anyway we got back in the cars and off we went. Got down, got down to the White House, and there, of course, were many of the guards and what have you outside, and we got lined up, ready to go, and somebody up in the front, one of the 
the powers to be said, we want the manager to lead you in. Well, they, of course, were thinking about the professional ball teams, and the manager is, quotation marks in college, the coach. So I said to bu uh, Buddy Chapdelaine, I said, Buddy, go. But Buddy refused. He didn't want it. He said, he want you. And I said, Buddy, go. <laughs> Buddy went. <laughs> and I've heard about it ever since. <laughs> he, he was so thankful that I gave him that opportunity to be the shining light in that group of 20 people, which included me. Well, that was hard. But anyway, I overcame it. But then the next thing was, of course, in with the president. And here, Leo Latris shined. Um, he had the uh, actual uh, acknowledgement from uh, President Eisenhower in that he, of course, presented a gallon of syrup. I think Leo said that he had made it, and he was trying to tell the president that he had made it. But anyway, <clears throat> it was well received. And then we had the period of time was with the president for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then, of course, out and gone. But anyway, we did it, they did a good job, we did a good job, and we came back with our heads held high. Thank you. Thank you, Rolly. Oh, we're going to ask people to share their memories of this trip now. Oh, yep, and Tootie's the first one. You ready, Tootie? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, I guess the thing that I get that we might start off is saying uh, the baseball team tour down south uh, each year were, were really always unbelievably exciting and memorable experiences. Uh, for those of us who were on the team. To me, the trip really expanded our horizons and opened our eyes to a world beyond the Linden boundaries of Vermont. Uh, my first trip uh, with the team, it was actually my freshman year, was under Coach uh, Mel Smith, and it was a blast. Just watching all of the guys uh, just enjoy kind of big city, big city life. With uh, subsequent uh, trips under uh, Roland, uh, who, um, who became, uh, as with almost everyone there, sitting in that crowd, a lifetime friend. But the best part of these trips was the simple fun that we were together and a bunch of guys and the camaraderie of those experiences that we had. Perhaps the most memorable and special trip was the 57 trip, in which we played several games along the route, and it was culminated in a game with the University of Maryland. And as Roland had indicated, we had a very exciting time going into restaurants. I already knew what the game was along the way, uh, because there was no open accommodation or other things, and I had gone to a school that was totally segregated from kindergarten up to 12th, up to my 12th grade, and when I came to Linden, um, it reversed the whole thing. I was the only black kid there, um, but I was never made to feel that way, and I was always, it was like you, I was part of the family, and I do that forever. Um, give my thanks and love to everybody there. Um, but also, once we were really had gotten to Washington, I remember pitching a game against U uh, University of, uh, of Maryland, and we lost a very close game, and actually had thrown a three-hitter, and something happened. I don't even remember the details of it, but we had lost the game. But although we lost it, uh, it was a very memorable game because my dad was able to come to the game <clears throat> and sit with me <clears throat> during the team. Um, it was the first time he had ever been able to um, 
see me play any sport. Uh, afterwards, uh, we had dinner, and some of you may remember with my folks, we had dinner, and uh, my mom was quite a cook, and she served uh, a wonderful meal to the guys, and uh, we just had, we ate in the backyard, we ate in the front yard, we ate every which way, which we had a great time. Um, and but as I say, it was one of the most memorable part, again, was that uh, going to the White House where my dad had arranged uh, for the team to meet the president, President Eisenhower. And he also arranged, if you remember, many of you arranged a, an audience with uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Um, and also, we also had an opportunity to meet some of the senators' uh, baseball team as well. But it was because of the, the Lyndon experience and my time with the guys that I could go through any of the stuff that was thrown at me. Like so many other things about Lyndon, the Lyndon baseball team, Southern Tour, had a profound impact on my future, my life, and my life, and my life. I salute today my LCC teammates and express the continued love that I have for my Lyndon family, and the overall Linden experience. I thank you and I love you. Thank you, Teddy. Um, I know there are quite a few of you that, uh, Bob Lowe, maybe you were on the 55, 56, and 57 trip. How would you like to talk? Sure. <laughs> I couldn't help but think about all those memories that they brought up and how different they are from what I remember. <laughs> I will speak to the sobriety of the trips. I know I really thought about that, uh, that the behavior of the people, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't out chasing skirts and, and looking for places to drink. We, we stayed in the dormitories, we stayed in the places we stayed, and we behaved appropriately. Each one, of, each one of the trips was special. The first trip, the special part about that was that I remember Pearlie and the taking of the notes and, and being kind of the, uh, the journalist for our trip. And I understand he still has those. And if you wouldn't mind parting with them, this could be a good place for those to show up, Pearlie. Of course, it was special to go visit the White House. And of course, that's all attributed to Preston and his connection with the White House. A, a, a very big highlight for me was when we all went to uh, Twitty's house and uh, had the meal there. And he's, he's right, we, we ate out in the back of the house. We were roaming through the house eating. He had many, many friends there, too. It was our whole baseball team, but he also had a large number of friends who were there. Um, I'll finish with, uh, it was really very, uh, lots of fun for me with uh, collecting a lot of nostalgia over the last month all by myself, and then collecting the rest of it here when I get to see some of you guys, especially uh, where we played. I wish somebody someplace has some books, like some score books, or some sort of record besides maybe there's some place in there that tells that we won a game, but I don't remember it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I can't help when I walked up and I saw this picture. That had to be taken before Bob pitched the game, and I think it was at Norwich. This is Bob Kent. Can you look at it? it was right cheek? He's, he's, got, he's got something in here. <laughs> and I remember when the game got started, I was playing in the outfield, and he, he was having trouble pitching, and he was, he was coughing and spitting, and tears were coming out of his eyes. <laughs> and we had, a, <coughs> we had to take a little break for <laughs> uh, so that he did regain his composure. But... <laughs> 
he, and if you look in the picture too, the one, the the, uh, the picture that's that's here, there is one guy who made a, he had a good chance to get started with the Baltimore Orioles. That's Wes Doyle, and if you look, he's he's like a real baseball player too because he's got a chunk of stuff in here. <laughs> I played golf in Florida with a 78-year-old man who was about the age of many here. He started out, he, he made it as a tryout with the Baltimore Orioles. His name is Joe Beerley, and he remembered Wes Doyle trying out for third base at the same time that Brooks Robinson came to the Baltimore Orioles. If you know, if you know about that competition, it, it says how good a player we had on the team. Wes Doyle. Thank you. Um, who is, who's next? Who wants to talk? You want to go? It's Bill LeGrow. I'm reading some notes that uh, Buddy sent um, to Bob, and um, Coach stole half of it anyway. I didn't realize that Coach couldn't hold a job. He was three places in three years. He's finally got a job here at Linden. Congratulations. <coughs> these, are, these are from Buddy. Uh, if you look at the picture of the team on the inv invitation, there is one guy in a suit instead of a tie or at suit and tie instead of a uniform. That's me. I played JV baseball as a freshman, but really wanted to go on the southern trip, so I volunteered to be the manager. I'd warm up the picture, pitchers and pop fly balls to the outfield. My only trouble was with when I was warming up Tootie, that could hurt. <laughs> While the team would be showering after the game, he would pick up the equipment. When I was looking through my uh, pictures, um, I s had several of Buddy up and on top of the station wagons, tying down the boxes and suitcases. Um, the, he also went on to talk about when we were going to the White House, um, they asked who the manager of the team was, and he said, I was. He asked me if I had identification, and I said I had my driver's license. And that's when they discussed the fact that he wasn't the coach of the team, he was just the manager. But, and he went on to mention that coach let him go first. Coach Lafayette used his own station wagon to drive part of the team down. I can't say enough good about coach. My years at Linden were the best four years of my life. And those notes are from Tootie, uh, from Buddy. I just wanted to say that I remember traveling up and down the Jersey Turnpike several times. We'd have a game down here, and we'd have to backtrack a little and head down. And while I was looking through the pictures, I did find two or three of us presenting Tootie's mother with a gift for her hospitality uh, for the meal that she put on for us. Thank you. Uh, Burns, I know you're going to help us out here. I too want to thank uh, everybody responsible for getting us together. It's nice to see everyone. <clears throat> um, thinking of people that are no longer with us, there were a couple of people that were left out, I think, that um, have passed. Uh, the only person that could hold Tootie Bruce was Harold Leach. And Harold is no longer with us. And Royce Bernard is no longer with us, as well as uh, Wally. <clears throat> so I'd, I'd like us to remember them, and there may be others. I may have missed some. West Doyle. Yes, West Doyle. Bob McDonald. Bob McDonald. I followed Bob McDonald as uh, 
teacher and coach at North Troy, <coughs> he called me up and he asked me to uh, apply for the job because he said, I've got a picture up here. He said, I think that you can help. And the picture was one of the best, was the best that ever played for me. And I never helped him out any, but he taught me a lot. <laughs> He's gone too. <coughs> West Oil, very good friend of mine. Uh, we had a lot of good athletes. Wes was a pure good athlete. And he was playing at double-A baseball in the league that Brooks Robinson was in, was leading the league in hitting, home runs, RBIs. Baltimore sent him home to Vermont. Said he was completely uncoachable, and they were absolutely right. <laughs> he was a tremendous talent, but he did just as he wanted to. What a great guy. Um, speaking of Tootie and being a farm boy and uh, never ever had seen a black person, and Ray Brooks joined that team later, um, I learned from them in our trips um, that it is not the color of someone's skin or their nationality, such as me as a Scotsman, or anything like that. It's what's here. It's the kind of person you are. And that carried forward in my educational career. All of us are going to tell stories here of how far we hit balls, <clears throat> how far the balls were hit off me, how fast we ran, all those kind of things. Um, they're just honest fibs. What was really important about the baseball trip was that it was part of our education at Linden Teachers College. We were here to be teachers, and most of us became teachers. And if you look at the classes in those times, there were some tremendous teachers and administrators um, very, very successful, such an influence on the lives of children. And so it isn't just the baseball trip. It's the whole experience of Linden Teachers College. I do want to speak about one game, and Tootie spoke of it in Lincoln. Um, as those of you that played know, occasionally, Tootie was a little bit wild. <laughs> Infielders like Leo Latrips could take a vacation because the ball was never hit on the ground. <coughs> um, Tootie uh, went into a streak of watch it, walking about seven or eight men. I hope Tootie's still listening. <coughs> and uh, uh, Coach Lafayette said, Burns, you're going in. I had a chance to throw about three pitches to warm up, threw over to first base several times because the bases were loaded, um, promptly threw the ball, and it disappeared over the left field fence. Grand slam home run. Big guy hit it. Next guy up was just as big, and I introduced him to the ground. <clears throat> he came up out of the ground with a bat in his hand, walked out to me, and he said, look at here, Whitey. If you do that again, he said, I'm going to pound you right into the ground. Realizing I was a long ways away from home, we're good teammates, but we were outnumbered badly, I said, yes, sir, my control will improve considerably. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Jarvis called me, and he wanted to say hi to everybody. Um, the, with, with Coach Lafayette, um, Dick was a relief pitcher, and it was very common for Coach Lafayette to say, warm up Dick. So we called him warm up Dick. <clears throat> Roly Guyette has written something that I've been asked to read. Roly was just elected to the Vermont Principals Hall of Fame as an athletic director and teacher uh, on Friday night. And uh, he's having some trouble with the hip. Memories of the southern trip, we drove in private cars. 
And I've got to tell you, I rode with Hoppy Judd one time. That was an experience. We got lost. We stopped at Wally's house in Brattleboro, and some of us stayed overnight there before traveling on to Delaware State. This was a new school, and we had a great time there. The picture of the team at the Capitol shows myself and Royce Pienaard with walking casts, and that may be where the broken leg comes in. <clears throat> we were playing at Montgomery Junior College. The trainer there put my foot and ankle in a whirlpool, and within a couple of days, I could play again. The trip was the first time I had run into segregation. In one restaurant, they fed all of us in a back room. When a small group of us went to a movie theater, they handed Tootie a different colored ticket. When we asked what that was all about, they said the ticket was for upstairs seating only. We all got our money back and left. Meeting President Eisenhower was the highlight of my life. It was so special. It was a great honor to be with that bunch of guys. So ends Roley's notes. I'd like to say this about Roley. I, I also happen to be in the Vermont Principals Hall of Fame with him. Um, at Norwich University, uh, one of my usual high pitches got hammered really good, and I could see that the game was over because we had a lead. And Roley made one of the most fantastic catches in center field, actually running up a couple of steps in the bleachers to catch the ball. Um, I'll always be thankful to him for that and thankful for knowing you. Thank you, Burns and Rowley. Uh, President Joe, this might be a good time to have you welcome the group. <laughs> now that you know all about Hi. them. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, Rowley baseball cast. Um, thanks so much for being here. I I've actually enjoyed just sitting sitting here in the corner, and, and I've learned a whole lot. And I really appreciate um, having the opportunity and the privilege to just kind of sit here and listen to the stories that you share with each other. And I really do hope that we'll make a point to ensure that our students get to hear some of these stories. It's really important, I think, for them to hear from you and to hear about the history of the college and the important role that the college plays, not just in your lives, but in the community, and know that your legacy lives very well in our students here and in the work that they are doing. So we really appreciate that. It's a real pleasure, and thank you again for being here. Really appreciate it.